The township economy makes up an estimated 17% of the country's overall employment. In a country with an unemployment rate of over 32%, the informal sector is a lifeline to countless families who lack formal employment. Welcome to the Corporate Profile feature and I am your host, Tebintin. Today I'll be engaging with the CEO of Lisaka Technologies, Mr. Linkin Madi, exclusive to Soweto TV. Linkin, welcome to Soweto TV. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for such having a, me. It's a pleasure. Having Thank you too. here. Thank Do you, you always have it, you know, a difficulty with people always mispronouncing your name? Because I get uh, that all the time. I think more on my first name than my second name. <laughs> so people will say Lincoln or Lincoln. So I always say, depending on <laughs> school you went to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's actually a good one. Yes. Look, Lincoln, we can joke all we want the whole yes. day. Let's get straight yes. into it. Yes. You know, when we think Lisaka Technologies, we always think about computers, either you are selling or fixing them. Yes. In this instance, you know, for our viewers, yes. you know, for their own betterment and understanding, how best would you describe what is Lisaka Technologies? We're a fin financial technology company or a fintech yes. that's involved in financial inclusion, sure. which is we operate a lot in the informal market. Mm. But people may know our sub-brands. Yeah. So in the social grant space, We've got Easy Pay Everywhere, oh, where we've got 1.3 million active customers yeah. that use our service. But you, other people may know Kazan, yeah. where we have got over 84,000 merchants that use our devices. Mm. Or some people might know um, Cash Connect, where you go to an engine and the vaults that are behind where you've deposited your money or you've paid your money, yeah. they get to that vault and that money is digitized. Oh, Other nice. people might know us with bill payments where they're paying their bills and that's easy pay. So all of these are part of the Lisaka family. And as you know, Lisaka is a crawl. Yes. It's mine. Of so course. we wanted to be part of the community ah. and look after its assets. Oh, that's amazing. One-stop shop. One-stop shop. Okay, let's speak about your title. Yes. You are the CEO. <laughs> I know it sounds fancy. I yes. know everyone wants to become CEO, <laughs> if you ask me. Yes. But what does your role entail in practicality? You know, leadership is not a title held. Yeah. It's an influence felt. Mm. My job is to influence yeah. the more than 2,000 people I work with mm. to deliver amazing service to our customers. My job is to create an environment where the 2,000 or so people that work with us mm. can succeed and thrive and succeed in their personal and professional lives. And finally, I see myself as the chief energy officer yeah. to create an environment where people want to come to work and mm. do amazing things. So I don't take myself seriously. I just see myself as part of a collective of other leaders to lead Lisaka to the next level. Wow. So you have over 2,000 people that you work with. Yes. Okay. 2,000, over 2,000 people that report. Yes. Well, that are under you, so to speak. Yes. Fascinating. You know, I can even but, if I know, to but, get just... But all of them <laughs> just know me as Lincoln and I don't take myself seriously. Yeah. We just try and work. Yes. And have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Because mm. sometimes these titles tend to confuse a lot of people who, yeah. who, who behave as if they are the title. Mm. So for me, a title is just responsibilities that I've been given. Wow. And mine is to, can I make a difference? Sure. Can I lead people differently? Can they say, I'd rather work for that guy rather than working for somebody else? And that's how we retain people. Oh, whilst we're still there, how would you describe your style of leadership? Because it sounds like <laughs> a fun guy. I would want to wait for you. I don't know what my colleagues will say. They say, I'm naughty, I'm full of fun. But I set uh, very high standards yes. and I care a lot about the people I work mm. with, but I also care about my customers. So it's very important that you work within Lisaka yeah. that you care about customers. Because if we just care about ourselves, yeah. but we don't care about our customers, we love each other to bankruptcy. Yeah, we will sure. have no company. Of course. So that's important. Of course, but it sounds like a healthy, fun environment to work. <laughs> We're trying. Yeah. We're trying. You know, guess it's been a convenient time, you know, for fintech or even plastic money, if you like. Yes. Please talk me through your experience, your first experience with money. My first experience with money was yeah. a piggy bank. All right. A piggy bank. In, yeah. In the olden days, banks used to give the children of their customers a little 
piggy bank. Right. And so whenever you've got money, yeah, it gets you, put in that piggy bank. Yes. But you want to get to open the piggy bank <laughs> so that you can spend the money. Sure. But the way it's designed, it only allows money in. Mm. And so after a while, then the parents will allow you to open. And all the money you've been given by relatives, by wow. teachers and others for good things you've done, you are able to do that. So that's my first memory yeah. of having my money in that piggy bank. But also, has it always been a discussion around the dinner table or it's been just a mere observation? I think there's a lot of observation. Mm. The only time I took money issues seriously yeah. is when I saw my father going to a bank to borrow money. Mm. I didn't like the interaction. Right. I felt that the relationship was like this and mm. that my father had to take off his hat in that conversation. Mm. Years mm. later, when I worked in a bank for close to 20 years, yes. I realized that banks have got targets to mm. give people money. Yeah. So it's not a favor yes. to give people yes. money. As long as somebody is either bankable or has good credit, mm. banks should be able to give money. Yeah. So somebody mustn't really bow on their knees to get money. So I, I thought that that's not something I liked. Uh, yeah. But I was young, but I observed that and something that stuck with me that I thought it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. So let us also track back to the time where you didn't have, you know, the likes of fintech or the easy way of, you know, transacting. What was um, how would you then reflect based on that time and now? So much has changed. Yeah. Um, people are able to do the entire banking on a phone. Mm. When in the past they had a passbook yeah. or a bank book yes. that recorded everything they did. Mm. In the past, people were to get their cash yeah. from a branch. Now people can go to an ATM. Mm. People had to wait for money to be sent via post. Yeah. Now people can get money to be sent to them on their phone through either instant money or your e-wallet and all of that. Yeah. So what technology does is that it closes the gap mm. between people, between businesses, yeah. distances. Sure. And so what we always want to say is let's allow technology to do more mm. so that it closes these gaps. Of course, some people are reluctant or a bit skeptical or scared of technology. Our job is to demystify technology and make it accessible. Don't use big words. Yeah. Use ways in which you can say to people, actually, do you realize you mm. can get this better? Let me give maybe one last example, yeah. which relates to maybe what my work now. Maybe four or five years back, yes. People would be paid their grant through cash yes. in open fields. Yeah. That, there was no dignity mm. in that. Mm. Lots of insecurity in that environment. Correct. Now, 58% of social grant recipients yeah. today are getting their money through mm. a financial mm. institution. Yeah. 58%. 58%. The remaining number yeah. is at the post bank. Mm. And even in the post bank, they've got a debit card. Of course. So that's how change manifests itself. Mm. So that people don't go to a place. Their grant is already, it's data yeah. that's coming to your card. Correct. And it's available to you from the moment mm. that that is done. It's no different from a salary. Yes. People don't walk to a place to get a salary. Their salary is already there. It's so already that's how technology is able to yeah. take us from where we were to where we are today. But you know, I like your words when you say, let us allow technology to do more for yes. us. But also yes. I know people have got those, you know, they are skeptical about yes. the security yes. of technology. And some of our elders are not even technologically advanced. Yes. So there is a lot more that needs to be done. But yes. also it's very much imperative. Let us allow Let's technology. Let's allow technology. Yes. Uh, another example is when... We were before COVID. Yeah. I worked for a large bank. And I remember one of the things we had to do was to promote tap, mm. right? So that we can go to a pause device yeah. and tap our cards. Yeah. There were WhatsApps and videos all over 
about how that thing will steal your money. Mm. Everything was happening. Mm. Then COVID hit. Yeah. People now were worried about their safety. Yes. When somebody said, at a distance, yeah. can you tap? People tapped. Mm. The use of tapping has skyrocketed. Mm. The same people that were skeptical yeah. because of an event called yes. COVID, yes. now they're tapping. You go to almost any shop, the first thing they'll, they'll put is, mm. do you want to mm. tap? So technology does move yeah. and we have to find a way of moving with it. Those who are not able to move, we must keep uh, giving them guidance and talking to them, not yes. judge them because they are at a particular point in time. Yeah. Also, they must show us the balance, you know? Yes. They must show us because they keep doing like this. And they, you know, we want to see how much we are paying. Let us entrust in change. Let us allow change to take its course. Let's park it here for now. The conversation will continue after the ad break. Welcome back to the Corporate Profile feature right here on your favorite channel, So Where to TV. I am your host, Tsebin Tinya, and I am still in conversation with the CEO of Lisaka Technologies, Mr. Lincoln Mali, on the state of the township economy, funding opportunities, and many more fruitful engagement, especially around financial inclusion, you know, and awareness, yes. Lincoln. Yeah. So, Lincoln, tell me, what is your own personal investment philosophy, you know, from a CEO level? Because, you know, with money, it differs from person to person or even rank to rank at times. I think for me, there are three things that matter. Um, the first one is the education of my children. Okay. So that's my most important investment. Yeah. Um, the second one is to create an investment for the future of my family when mm. I'm no longer there. That's important. Yeah. And the third one was to invest in a business okay. where if I'm no longer working, yeah. would I have a business that does that? that. Mm -hmm. So those three are the core of my investment philosophy. All other things are peripheral. Sure. Those three are um, very important. They are imperative yes. indeed. So as one of the leading focused, you know, technology focused companies in South Africa, um, how important is financial inclusion, especially for, for the informal market? You know, our society cannot succeed if it remains unequal. Yeah. We're the most unequal country in the world. Mm. So it's important that investments must go into the informal sector. It's important that businesses must engage with the informal sector, not with the idea to dictate to the informal sector how it should run itself, mm. but to become part of the, of the community in the informal environment. Yeah. So I find that a lot of people grow up in the informal sector, grow up in townships, grow up in villages. When they get to the corporate sector, they adopt a corporate persona yeah. That is distant from what mm. they know. My view is our experiences and everything we've learned yes. from the informal uh, economy must enable us to change mm. the corporate world to adapt and thrive in the informal sector. Yeah. So when I was working for a bank like Standard Bank, yes. we, I was in the forefront of saying, let's have ATMs in townships. Mm. It, it was taboo at the time. Yeah. Let's have a Mzansi account for low-income customers. Let's build branches in, in places where there are black people. Let's have transactional accounts for black people. At the time, 20 yeah. years ago, it, it was like taboo. Sure. Now that I am in Lesaka, yes. we are going to spaza shops and mm. creating an environment where spazas can do more about what they do today. Let me give an example. We would start with a pause device. Sure. Pause devices have been the problem for many spazas or the informal sector not embracing technology. But once you give this, the, the pause device for free, yes. you're lowering the costs. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, here's a, spaza, a, a pause device. Yes. Use it to generate business. Mm -hmm. And we start by allowing them or enabling them to sell Yes. There's products, which are your airtime, data, yes. and things of that sort. 
So also, how do you then identify those puzzle shops? Do you just go to all the townships and just hand over the No, no, we go. We've got a sales team. So okay. I talked about mm. those 2,000 people yes. who do the work <laughs> every day. So those guys go and look for businesses. Yep. Look at the trade, look at the spaza shop, look at whether, mm. you know, the owner understands their business, find out what, um, you know, what, what transactions they do, what revenue do they make, what's their turnover, all of that. Yes. If they kind of meet the criteria, then you get into an agreement. Okay. Because it's a contractual relationship. Correct. And the more transactions they make, the more we benefit, the more they benefit. Mm. And here's the exciting thing is that we first give you the device and you are able to sell these VAS products. Yeah. But then we're able to lend you money so that you can buy more VAS products for you to sell. For you to sell. Right? Yeah. That's now how the technology is helping. Revitalizing but the township absolutely. economy. It yeah. gets better. The same merchant or business person wants to now buy their goods yeah. from, let's say, SAB or the milk people or the bread people. Mm. In the past, they would have left their shop to go and buy. Yes. Now, mm. on that same device, yes. they're able to order their stock mm. and get a QR code and pay. Wow. That driver comes, QR code, the stuff is delivered. Because many large companies that sell bread, milk, cigarettes, alcohol into our communities yes. want to have less cash mm. to lower the security, security risks. Yeah. But now through that device, with Kanzan device, people are able to buy their goods. And through data, it tells them they are good for it. And that's delivered. So that's how you're changing mm. the environment mm. through technology. You know, this is quite important, especially for spaza shops because they're yes. mainly in the townships, yes. right? How has the rollout been? What is the progress and what is the impact? How mm. has it been like? The impact is huge. Yeah. Um, we now have about 84,000 mm. uh, spaza shops across the country. Amazing. We uh, generate trade. Um, of about 2 billion rands a month in those mm. spaza shops. And yeah. with the index that we launched last week, yes. we could now show what has happened just in two years. Because once people come and buy from you as a spaza owner or a merchant, you have to top up your wallet through which you can buy goods and everything. Two years ago, all of the top up was cash. Yeah. So you pay me cash, then I have to go to an ATM or a bank and go and deposit the money. Mm. The data we've got now show that 40% of what's loaded on the wallet was through card transactions. Yeah. Because now people in our townships are using cash, but also using cards. Mm. Because people have got debit cards. Mm. Think of about... Course. People are social grant recipients. Yes. Now they've got a card. Mm. Remember when I was talking about Mzansi account? Correct. Almost every bank now has got a basic um, account. Account, yeah. Whether you're Capitec, your Standard Bank, your EasyPay, there is a card. Those people now use their cards to pay at a tavern, pay at a spaza shop. Yes. That's why now 40% sure. of transactions in our customer base are now card transactions. Mm -hmm. And that is showing you the trend in the direction of digitizing the informal economy. Wow. So you have over 72,000 informal retail merchants. You know, 80, that you, more than 84,000. More than, more than the number even increased. We, 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 we used 70,000 for this survey. I see. But overall now, in terms of our growth, we've got 84,000 because every mm -hmm. single day, our staff is going out and opening new yeah. uh, accounts and more new customers and servicing the yes. other customers that are there. But from a feedback perspective, because it sounds nice when you say it, mm -hmm. you know, what has the experience been like for the consumer? For the consumer, it's been good because people have an option. 
Yep. If I want to use cash yes. at my spaza, I use cash. You use cash. If I want to use a card, yep. I use a card. Sure. Because the thing I always go back to is if I go to any shop mm. as Lincoln, yes. I will use a card or use cash. Mm. Why should it be different for somebody in a township? Yeah, if they want true. to use cash, let them use cash. If they want to use a card, let them use a card. So some places don't take cards. Yes. Then use your yes. cash. Some places want people to use cards for safety. Then you use a card. Again, mm. choice is very important. Yes. Look, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the, the group revenue rose, you know, to 2.5 billion year on year. Yes. Look, this obviously, you know, generate from your airtime, selling, you know, lending even, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but primarily, where could you safely say, most of the revenue was generated from? So we've got these two businesses. Yep. Um, we've got what we call the merchant business. Yes. That's where the airtime, data, uh, you know, uh, the vaults, mm. our ATMs, that business generated 20% growth, I see. right? They were able to generate that yep. growth, right? And then the consumer side, yes. where we've got 1.3 million customers, and they've got loans with us and they've got similar promises with us, they generated 13% of our revenues. That's why we could see our revenue grow in the manner that it has. So both parts of the business are growing and generating good revenue. Mm, but you know, more than anything, I like the fact that, you know, Lesaka is growing. And yes. also the main priority is to ensure that informal market grows bigger and better. Yes. Like you are saying, as the core target in this perspective. You know what's pleasing for us is we are in the business now two and a half years yes. as a leadership team. Mm, okay. The company was losing money mm. every month. The money, the company had not been profitable for five years. For real? We started a journey as yes. this leadership team to turn the company mm. around. That turnaround is now on track. Mm. The consumer business, the one that was making lots of losses, yes. has now had five quarters of positive growth. Mm. The Connect Group that we bought yes. with Kazang and everything, yes. we bought it as a growing company. It continues to grow. Mm. So these two businesses that are part of Lisaka are both doing well. Why? Because of our staff and because of our customers. When leaders don't understand where their growth is coming from, yes. they think it's something magical they've done. Mm. No, business are, businesses rely on their customers. If your customers do well, yes. your company will do well. If your staff do well, your company will do well. So the credit mm. really should go to our staff and our customers for the growth of Lisak. There you have it, straight from the horse's mouth, with the CEO of Lisaka Technologies, Mr. Lincoln Mali, sharing insightful and fruitful engagement on financial literacy as well as financial inclusion, especially for the informal market. We are getting into the deeper side of things now. The deepest and the deepest, but also very fruitful and beneficial to you, the viewers at home. Join us after the ad break. Welcome back to the Corporate Profile feature. Thank you for choosing to stay with us as we continue our discussion with the CEO of Lesaka Technologies, Mr. Lincoln Mali. Lincoln, you are servicing yes. a lot more of grant recipients and we even yes. touched on it, I think, as we were you know, engaging. Yes. Now tell me, obviously when you do trades, you have to have a lot of savings. How has that experience been like? I think that for us, we want our customers to save more. But I think there's a problem with the actual quantum of grants they have. That the grant is not a lot. And so what we try and do for now is to enable people to save where they want to save, which is with their stock files. But when they can't make ends meet, allow them an opportunity to be able to borrow in a safe way so that they are not abused by the machonisas of this world. They are not abused by micro lenders and unscrupulous players. 
we wanted to offer an environment which is under the National Credit Act and National Credit Regulator. And that's why we offer them loans. We've got some plans for creating our own environment of Stockfell, but those plans are still in the pipeline. Okay. You know, we are nearing the festive season and you're yes. touching base on lending as well. Yes. How do you make up of the South African consumer, especially their spending behavioral patterns around the festive period? One of the things that you hope you can get to almost every South African <laughs> is that it's okay to spend during the festive period, but let's not overspend. Because really, we're talking about, what, eight, nine, ten days? It's good to spend your money to the things that you want to enjoy yourself, enjoy your time with your friends and family during that time. But what's not good is if people are then so over indebted that come January, school fees, uniforms and those things are not then taken care of. Or people have overindulged and got themselves into so much debt that when the year begins, they're in a debt spiral. So we would like to offer, especially for our grant recipients, loans that they can afford, loans that they pay and they know how long it is going to take them. So for us, our loans are six months. It's, it's not, you're not trying to find out how long it is. It's clear, you know it's six months and you know exactly what you'll pay and you know what the maximum you can borrow. And that for us is important. And that's why it has made it easier for us to grow our loan book responsibly and not get people into trouble and making sure that our loan book remains very healthy and our customers are not in more debt. It pains me when I go to my branches and there are my customers who have got a loan with me. And then there are many other of my customers who don't have a loan with me who are taking the statement and are going to a Mashonisa, and I know that they are going to go further and further into trouble. They don't know how much they're going to pay. They don't know how long they're going to be paying. They don't know how much can be taken from them. And people do things of taking their cards, all of those things. We don't want that. We want people to get credit in a credible, open, transparent manner. So speaking about microloans, um, Look, you just shaved off your first uh, first quarter loss. Mm -hmm. um, are you not worried, especially from a lending perspective, um, about, you know, these are tough times. Yes. You know, the interest rates are higher yes. and stuff like that. How yes. then have you manipulated um, or manipulated rather, you know, the system to ensure that also the consumers stand to benefit and are not affected by these trying times? What we've tried to do is to offer a product that can stand good times and bad times. If you saw the results of almost all the banks and retailers, they show you that the, the consumer is in trouble because these are difficult economic times. But the way our loans are structured has meant that through these difficult times, we've not seen an adverse impact on our loan book. We have not seen a deterioration in the quality of our loan book. We have not seen a deterioration in the payment profile of our customers. And that's what tells us that we're on the right path. Because the worst thing we can do is to create over indebtedness. The worst thing we can do is to create an environment where people are taking loans that they cannot pay. So through this cycle, our loan loss ratio remains very low. And we watch it all the time. And up to now, touch wood, we have not seen a deterioration in that loan book. And I like you touching on the fact that your, your, your default ratio hasn't changed in any case. So that gives us a guarantee that indeed our consumers are safe with yes. Lissaka Technologies and your service offering holistically. Yes, because Let's... we're a listed company. So in everything we do, it has to be reported. So if the bad debts were starting to spike, the market would see, the regulators would see. And our loan loss ratio has remained like that. Even on our insurance side, our collections are at 97%.
which shows that our people pay for the things that they see as of value, which is our loans and our funeral plans. And that's something that's pleasing for us. Yeah. So when we look at the career that you have, the life that you live, let's speak about you. Maybe our viewers will also relate and also reflect on their own personal, you know, investment philosophies. Do you have any fears about your current financial situation? Yes, I do. Um, mm -hmm. If I were to lose my job, it would have an impact not only on my family, my broader family, the community projects that I do, the philanthropic work that I do. So there are so many people who depend on me. So it's important that I have products also for risk. Because sometimes people only think of investments for more money. You have to have those products that are there in case I lose my job, in case I'm disabled, in case I have a dread di di disease, in case I, I, I'm retrenched. All of those have to be part of your portfolio to make sure that you are doing the protection of your life and your finances for those days that we all dread. We get that you're worried about the future. Okay. Yes. Do you have a personal indulgence? Let's speak about it. You know your interests from a financial point of view. I like to spend on my family. Um, so my wife tells me I spoil my kids. Um, so that's my indulgence. Um, when I was younger, I used to love clothes, but <laughs> I'm now much older. So my indulgence is the things I do for my kids. I have two uh, daughters. Um, and so whenever they say daddy and their eyes do this, I disagree. And I have a son who I adore. So I spend a lot of my basically spare money on them. But if I don't, I then um, buy books. Um, I like reading. I like writing. I'm an author myself. So I like reading about other, 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 other authors and other leaders. So you'll be reading more during the festive season? During the festive season, no I have a number of books. I have got earmarked that I'll be buying and I will be uh, reading those uh, during the festive season. My family calls me a do-nothing king. So all I do is sit and read and relax. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of that. So thank you so much, Lincoln. In closing, mm. what would be your words of encouragement to your clients, to your customers, consumers in general. What would be your words of advice as we get into the most exciting time of the year, the festive period? I think that as a society, we must not be like some, you know, somebody who's taken an energy drink. They are on a high and then they are on a low. I think we must find a way of having an even kill. When you hear people talk about the country, people are saying, we have no hope. Let's give up. This country is you know, in a mess. There are a lot of problems in this country, but they need us to solve them. They will not only be solved by politicians. We must ask ourselves, what are we doing in our sphere of influence to fix things? If I'm obsessed with what's gonna happen with the elections, but I'm not worried about what's happening in the school where I studied. If I'm gonna spend 50,000 rands in some club or tavern, but I cannot give 10 rands to my local church. If I'm gonna spend 30,000 rands on new clothes and I have no money to give to a bursary, to a student, I am contributing to the destruction of the country. We must hold ourselves accountable for the little things that we can do to make our country better and not look for messiahs in politicians. Each one of us, those who've got kids can raise our kids better. Those who are in marriages can make our marriages to work. Those who have got schools can we make our schools to do well. Every one of us can make a positive contribution. If you're running a business, run that business successfully. If you are in a corporate, be ethical, create more jobs, create other young leaders. So I think that we must look at ourselves. We're not spectators. We're not watching a game. We are part of what's going on. 
and we have a responsibility to make this country the best it can ever be. How do you give back to the community from a personal perspective? Because you sound like a selfless person, always speaking about how you could better the lives of others before yourself. So I have a, a foundation called the Lincoln Miley Foundation. It's taken all the things I've been doing over the last 15, 20 years and put them now under one roof. So just a couple of examples. Uh, I have a book called Blazing a Trail and I will donate uh, one book that you can, uh, um, on your next show, give to a lucky viewer. Um, so that book, all the proceeds from the sale of the book go to the foundation so that the foundation could do its work. I run a youth uh, leadership program where we get 250 of the top young people to meet 16 leaders or CEOs in the country. We do it every year at the Hanley Business School. I have a rugby tournament that I have sponsored over the last, uh, since 2014. I've got a cricket tournament in rural areas. I've got a feeding scheme. And then I'm part of bursary, uh, of giving bursaries with some of the people I studied with at Rhodes University. So, oh, and then my time, the time I give, especially to young people, um, young leaders, going to communities, talking to them and telling them that here was somebody like me who was a school dropout and now is a CEO. Here's somebody like me who was in and out of jail when they were young. Now I am a graduate of many universities. That it is possible to move from where you are to somewhere else by just committing yourself. So that's what I try and give out um, you know, in, of my time and whatever little resources my wife and I have. And there you have it. Catch us after the ad break as we conclude this insightful discussion. Welcome back to the Corporate Profile feature. We have reached the last segment of the show and we are still joined in the studio by Mr. Lincoln Mali, who is the CEO of Lisaka Technologies. You recently launched the Informal Index. You know, I want you to holistically talk us through you know, the, the impact of it, how effective is it? You know, what are the aspirations about it? I think the most important thing was to open up an environment that was close to so many people, except of course for the people who live and work and do business in that, in that sector. So there's a lot of anecdotal information about the informal market, its size and what happens. So we thought that we already have more than 70,000 merchants in Spaza shops. We then partnered with Gigi Alcock, who wrote Cassie Economics, and said, why don't we create a quarterly index which can tell people what's going on in the informal market, just at least from the vantage of our Spaza shops, so that you see what's going on there. So the first and the biggest thing we've done or that has come out of that was the fact that card transactions are growing very fast, more than we all anticipated. We've always known that cash is big and cash will be there in the informal market for a long time. But what we've not seen was the level of growth of card transactions. So our spaza shops, two years ago, would take all of the cash that comes from their customers who are buying stuff from them. And then they'll take that money and then they'll go and deposit that money. So we track the cash versus card. When we have now tracked after two years, we found that 40% of the transactions have been card transactions that are happening in that space, which shows that the direction of travel of digitization is moving very fast. Now, most people will either say cash will be here forever or others will just say there will be no cash. We don't want to be in these extremes. Let's deal with things as they move. And so 70,000 um, Spaza shop give you enough of a customer base to know what's happening. So we now have seen that uh, uh, digitization. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean for a, um, a, a Spaza owner? It means that I'm more secure because now there's going to be less and less cash and more and more cards. Two, 
I can take on more transactions. I'm not depending on how much money I have. Three, I can now digitize more of what I do. Because if I've got this, I don't need to leave my shop to go and deposit the money. I've already got the money because it's coming through card transactions. What it means for consumers, they've got choice, either cash or card. And so that's the beauty of what we see. In the next few quarters, we will tell the public more other insights that we're getting from this data. So for me at a personal level, this is one of the proudest moments in my career to be part of a company that is in the informal market, but making a difference and showcasing that. So now the interest in this index is worldwide. People are now asking, tell us more. People didn't even know what is a spaza shop. But we're doing other things. We're also showing people that spaza shops are not a one size fits all. There are different spaza shops. There are also different businesses in the informal sector. Unless you've lived in a township, or unless you understand what happens in a village or a township, you know, for example, hair salons is big business. Car washes is big business. Fixing of cars is big business. Taxis, all of these things. So we're trying to get people to understand that life is not only what happens in suburbia. In the informal market, there are businesses and there are customers. And people are wanting to travel less and less to other environments and want to do things in their environments. This gives an opportunity for those businesses in the informal market to grow and for people to spend more in those environments. And so that's where we see the future. Also, you are saying it's known globally. How do you then ensure the effectiveness is extensive in South Africa and that, you know, a lot of spaza shops you know, are aware and make use of it before it even gets to the international market. We are doing our own roadshows, telling uh, our customers. We are getting our staff to tell our customers how their information is now telling the world about what they do. We are getting other trade organizations now to be interested in what we do. I've already got a couple of government departments that have reached out to say, we want to know more about what you guys are doing. Uh, can we partner with you? So, so we think that this is going to grow. And when we get to the next quarter, when we're announcing our results in the next quarter and give more other snippets of what's going on, the interests keep growing. So what may have been hidden to other people is now going to be revealed and we want to reveal some more. So to us, this is like an onion. We, we keep on peeling this onion uh, and make sure that people get to understand and see that there's bottom, there's, sorry, there's a fortune at the bottom of the economic pyramid. People may not see it because they're using the wrong lens. We just want to clean the lens so that people can see the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. Amazing. So going into the new year, what are you hoping for the business, especially since that you are able to swing away from the loss? We just continue to grow. Um, we've given the market guidance that um, we're going to grow our business again in this quarter. It is a difficult time because most businesses are not growing because the economy is not growing. So we sit in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a blessed environment where our company keeps growing. So we've projected that this coming quarter is going to be a quarter of growth. The, 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 the November, December period is a big period for both consumer part of our business and our merchant part of the business. So we hope when we report in January, we will be reporting that our business did well in this quarter. And so we've got very good uh, prospects for the coming quarter. And for the full year, we projected that our business will make even bigger profits this year and bigger revenues this year. So very, very optimistic about the prospects for Lisak. Sure. So what are your personal objectives and vision for Lisaka as the CEO, as the leader, you know, as the head of the organization? For you to safely say, we have done it, what would it take? For, for me, we have to grow organically, which is grow our business as we've got it, and we've got plans to do so. But what excites me more is inorganic growth. In other words, measures and acquisition that 
we can grow this business to be the largest ecosystem, dual-sided ecosystem with consumer and merchant in the country, indeed on the continent. This is our dream. So we are talking to a number of companies as we speak, where we're looking at possibilities of bringing um, on board into the Lisaka, into our core, so that we become an even bigger organization. So for me, the growth opportunity is big. Us becoming a larger organization, which is a larger fintech for financial inclusion is what excites me. When we were starting this journey, and Jabuma Buza was our, our chairman, he talked out to us about what is possible. He's no more. Our role is to make that dream come through, grow this business and make sure that we can show people that people all over the world, even at NASDAQ, can invest in the informal community and get a return. Imagine that company now being big and growing. That is my personal ambition to be part of that team that is part of that growth. And once you have that dream, it's not about you as a CEO, because the goal is bigger than the role. Because if an organization is big, and tomorrow we have another bigger organization that we get, I might not be CEO, but I will be part of something big. That's why the goal has to be bigger than the role. And my goal is for us to have the largest FinTech on the continent focused on financial inclusion. Wow. Thank you so much, Linkin. It has been an absolute honor and pleasure Thank to you. have you in the studio. I know our viewers are definitely taking something. You know, they are applying all the pointers that you've been sharing. Thank you so much for the work that you do as Lisaka. Thank you so much for prioritizing our consumers Thank you. more than anything, especially the informal market, Thank you. because that is where the strength of the township, the revitalization of the township economy lies, yes. you know. Thank you. So for us, Lisaka, Lisaka. <laughs> this is who we want to be. Yeah. Research shows that while informal businesses typically do not contribute directly to the fiscus through taxes, they provide livelihoods, employment and income for approximately 2.5 million workers. Informal trading and small business is a hotspot for economic growth in South Africa. It has been an absolute pleasure and honor to keep you company. I remain your host, Sebin Tinya. This is the Corporate Profile feature. Until next time, God bless.